Good morning. We're here today for an auspicious occasion. A tribute to Dr. David Kearney McDonough on the eve of New York Iron Year's bicentennial. We are honored today to create a legacy to Dr. David K. McDonough at New York Iron Year Infirmary. We're extremely grateful to Dr. Daniel and Marjorie LaRose for their generosity in commissioning this painting and then gifting the painting portrait to New York Idea. It's an incredibly beautiful piece of artwork and a fitting tribute to Dr. McDonald, America's first African-American eye and ENT specialist who practiced his unique set of skills for over 11 years at New York Islander. I want to read an incredibly poignant and powerful tribute written by Dr. Richard Copeland, who is an esteemed clinical uh, voluntary physician here at New York And Dr. Colton writes, on February 1st, 1838, a New Orleans slave owner named John McDonough, a historic name in Louisiana, or to this day, statues his legacy faring poorly in the recent Black Lives Matter protest. Mr. McDonough wrote to Walter Lowry, an esteemed U.S. Senator and Secretary of the Presbyterian Board of Foreign Missions in New York City. His letter included the following. I beg leave to observe that among my black family, I have two youths, slaves, of great promise of the age of 19 and 20 years, who are remarkable at that early period of life for their intelligence, knowledge, and solidarity of judgment. Their pious and tractable disposition, whom I offer to your society to be given a religious education preparatory to their becoming missionaries of the gospel in the land of their forefathers. The 19 year old was David McDonough. Lowry would become David McDonough's legal, legal guardian while he matriculated at Lafayette College, and clearly he found John McDonough's description of David to be asked. David was a unique individual, so much so that even John, a slave owner and by definition a racist, was openly complimentary about his 19-year-old slave. And recall this was the year 1838. David's contract with his slave owner determined that he was to attend Lafayette College and on graduation emigrate to Liberia, where John openly knew he might become his president. Another Madison he related to McLeod. And that's what he thought of David McDonough. But David wanted to be a formally educated physician. Unheard of back then, especially in the 1800s, for a black man, especially one stigmatized by having been a slave. Six years later, upon graduation from Lafayette College, Lowry helped David undermine John McDonough's demand that he leave for Liberia and instead helped alter history by introducing him to Dr. John Kearney Rogers, the infirmary co-founder. David's introduction to Rogers was more than fortuitous. Rogers was a man who saw the need to assist those less fortunate through no fault of their own. Noting, noting that he was stung by society's unwillingness to care for them. And he wrote this as a preamble to the founding of the New York Pioneer Infirmary. In David, Rogers fulfilled his mission and gave him the opportunity to become the only slave to gain a professional medical education, to become America's first black ophthalmologist in the ENT sector as well as New York Iron Year Infirmary's first black attendant. 
Perhaps it is fitting that we have no image of David, although it has vexed Dr. Copeland for ten, over 10 years that he has not been able to find a fitting image of Dr. Macbeth. The painting of the black man being presented today is not David K. McDonough, but more importantly, he might be considered an avatar. The embodiment of the young men and women of color who aspire to join our profession. The painting is the New York Pioneer Infirmary manifesto to fulfill John Kearney Rogers' desire to build an institution that not only serves those in need of medical care, no matter their color or economic condition, but as importantly, also employs a robust popular population of expertly trained young women and men of color to provide that care. I know this can be done, right, Dr. Copeland. John Turney Rogers did. And with that, I'd like to thank Dr. Copeland for just incredibly fitting words uh, during this tribute to Dr. David Turney himself. Upon Dr. John Turney Rogers' death, Dr. McDonough took on Turney as his middle name. And that's why we honor Dr. David Turney McDonough today. I'd like to introduce next Dr. Kanisha Frempong, who is our Vice Chair for Diversity and Inclusion in the Department of Ophthalmology at the Icon School of Medicine in El Sano. Uh, Dr. Frampong has also been a co-chair of the Diversity Council here at New York I the Infirmary of North Carolina. And with that, uh, Dr. Frampong. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. It is a tremendous privilege to participate in this moment to honor Dr. David Kearney McDonough. He was a man with an unbreakable spirit and keen intellect who became the first African-American eye and ENT specialist at this very New York Eye and Ear Infirmary. This was in the mid-1800s, no less, despite being born into slavery. Dr. McDonough practiced at New York Eye and Ear for 11 years, and it is only fitting that his legacy should have a place of permanence at this institution, the first specialty hospital in America for ophthalmology and otolaryngology, especially as we celebrate our bicentennial anniversary. I try to wrap my mind around Dr. McDonough's profound fearlessness and just mind-blowing accomplishments. How did he do it? How did he reach for and conquer goals so seemingly unattainable for a black person at that time, and do so despite forces conspiring against him? There were certainly allies in his past, such as Dr. John Kearney Rogers, the co-founder of New York Pioneer, who mentored him and provided him a staff position at the infirmary, or some of his peers who embraced him as a colleague. In 2020, we find ourselves in a state of heightened awareness of racial injustice, bias, and inequity. I wonder about the gains we've made as a human race over time, and what that has cost us, and what we have lost in the process. Acknowledging and honoring Dr. McDonough the way we are doing today is a significant part of keeping the power of his legacy alive. It is a gift to all of us, and particularly to the black and brown bodies who wander these halls as patients, trainees, or staff and physicians. Great things, seemingly impossible things, are accomplished when we combine our efforts and support one another. Dr. McDonough's life and legacy continue to illuminate the path forward for us all. Personally, I am so, so proud of Dr. McDonough and this institution. I am also most grateful to be a part of honoring him today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pembroke, for those inspiring words. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Daniel LaRoche. Um, Dr. and Mrs. LaRoche have uh, generously um, 
provide the New York Biennial you know, with a lot of contributions to Dr. Mandela, who commits by commissioning this beautiful portrait. Dr. LaRoche is an, an outstanding glaucoma specialist who has been affiliated with New York Biennial for many years. And I can always count on Dr. LaRoche to be at the forefront of glaucoma surgery here at New York Biennial. He's a founding member of the National Medical Fellowship, NMF. NMF's mission is to provide scholarships and support for underrepresented minority students in medicine and the health profession. NMF, through their outreach and fundraising, has established a lecture series and annual scholarships in honor of Dr. David K. McDonough. And we're so delighted that one of our first year residents, Dr. Giselle, Giselle Lynch, is also uh, the um, David Scudder Scholar. And, and it's just great to see that Dr. McDonough's legacy continues to really have a powerful impact here at the Thank you. Good morning. I would like to thank Dr. Claude Cowan and the late Dr. Robert Copeland, who were my chairs in ophthalmology training at Howard University. I would like to thank Dr. Robert Rich, whom I did my glaucoma fellowship here at New York Eye and Ear Infirmary with Dr. Jeffrey Liebman and Dr. David Greenfield. I would like to thank Dr. Richard Copeland for his work in supporting the legacy of Dr. McDonough at Lafayette College and sharing it with me a few years ago. I want to thank the National Medical Fellowship and the founding committee members for helping to make the David Kearney McDonough Scholarship nationally recognized and the National Medical Association. I want to thank J Dr. James Sy and the leadership here at New York Eye and Ear for accepting this tribute to David Kearney McDonough and their efforts to further diversify ophthalmology and ENT residency programs here. I'd also like to thank Dr. James Sy and Dr. Gary Butts for their support of the legacy of David Kearney McDonough Scholarship. David was born into slavery and enslaved in 1819. In 1838, after working for his freedom, he attended Lafayette College in Eastern Pennsylvania, where he graduated number three in his class, despite being forced to take classes and meals separately from other students due to his race. With the help of Senator Lowry and John Kearney Rogers, David was able to attend classes at Columbia Physicians and Surgeons, later known as Columbia University Medical School. Dr. Rogers was an advocate and helped David despite the objections of the medical college president who refused to enroll David as a bona fide matriculant and at graduation refused to award him a medical degree. Nonetheless, Dr. Rogers provided Dr. McDonough with a staff position at the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary, and remarkably, Dr. McDonough's peers embraced him as a bona fide colleague, and by all accounts, he was considered a respected physician. Throughout his career, Dr. McDonough held out that he was a graduate of the College of Physicians and Surgeons, a claim the school never challenged. When John Kearney Rogers died in 1850, Dr. McDonough took Kearney as his middle name in honor of his mentor. In league with Frederick Douglass, he became active in the abolitionist movement and a champion of workers' rights. Dr. David Kearney McDonough died in 1893 at the age of 72. As a testament to his legacy, appreciated by both black and white members of society, the McDonough Memorial Hospital opened on West 41st Street in 1898. Dr. David Kearney McDonough was at New York Iron Ear for more than 11 years, making him the first African-American iron ENT specialist. And as far as we know, Dr. McDonough is the only American enslaved person to have gained a professional medical education. Recently, our efforts with Dr. Copeland's meeting at Columbia University led to Dr. McDonough getting his medical degree from them nearly 150 years later. Dr. David Kearney McDonough is an American hero. His story shows that you cannot suppress the soul of man. Many of the issues he faced back in 1838 continue to be relevant today. We have all made progress by dismantling slavery and dismantling, dismantling lawful segregation. We must all continue to work to dismantle systemic racism, sexism, violence, plantation capitalism, and healthcare disparities. Across the country today, you're seeing and hearing the voices of Americans from all backgrounds continuing to address these issues today. We have inherited a system that was designed to create a wealth gap and wealth disparities. Currently, the net worth of whites is $171,000 a year, and for blacks is $17,000 a year. This is a tenfold difference that's caused by systemic inequities in housing, education, mass incarceration, poverty, and healthcare. 
This is plantation capitalism. We all must continue to look at and reform every aspect of our society to completely restore equality and equity for all Americans. We must tie government funding of research, philanthropy, corporate profits to address diversity, eliminate poverty, and eliminate inequity. We can eliminate violence, we can eliminate sexism, and racism, and, and healthcare disparities. We have to continue to audit all financial reports to ensure adequate increase in sustained funding to resolve these issues to the victims of these policies. Today, we have 41 million blacks in the United States. However, we only have 400 black ophthalmologists. This creates a lack of access to care, leading to higher rates of blindness from cataracts, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy. With the other 18,000 ophthalmologists, there is a huge maldistribution that exists, leaving black and Afro-Latinos communities short. To diversify the medical profession, we have to diversify the pipeline. Currently, at the Bronx Science High School, a magnet high school that is a pipeline for future doctors, future lawyers, future business people, only 3% of the students are black compared to the New York City population of 26%. How did this happen? Well, currently, standardized testing is being used to admit the students. Standardized testing has both class and cultural bias. Instead, we have to reform the acceptance criteria to accept the best students from each community that reflects the diversity of our city and our country. Without urgent and immediate reform, the current plantation capitalism will continue to be perpetuated. To lead to a more equitable, peaceful society, we must look back at the founders of civilization from the Nile Valley. The author of the first book was Tahotep, who wrote the teachings of Tahotep, an African father teaching his son life lessons. We must learn about Imhotep, the first physician, an African from 2500 BCE. We must learn from the first medical textbook written in Africa that served as a foundation for Western medicine, now known as the Edwin Smith Papyrus. This text is currently in a vault at the New York Academy of Medicine. We are all one race, the human race. We have all descended from a black African woman, Lucy, 200,000 years ago, in the land now known as Ethiopia. Once we are all united, we can right the wrongs of the past and current structural systems that we have inherited to acknowledge true history. We can then move forward to correct it and give acknowledgments and make whole all who have contributed to our civilization. I want to congratulate the artist, Leroy Campbell, who through this piece was able to bring Dr. Kearney McDonough's spirit back. He was also able to capture the historical context of early cataract surgery being performed in the Nile Valley and progress to contemporary ophthalmologists in America today with inspiring quotes and resurrecting and restoring history. We must be vigilant to make our society a more perfect union to live up to our constitution, which states, quote, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, and provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Dr. David Crenny McDonough devoted his life towards making our society a more perfect union and addressing health disparities. He did not see all of the progress that we have made, and we may still not see the progress that will be made over the next 20 to 100 years. However, we must diligently continue in his spirit to make our society live up to the promise of our constitution and address health disparities, including ophthalmology and ENT disparities for all. Once again, I would like to thank Dr. Sai and the leadership of New York Ionia for accepting this piece. And I hope it serves to continue to inspire innovation, academic excellence, research, leadership, and continued progress and equity for all. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, fine, yeah. But let me introduce uh, those members who are here uh, standing with me today. Next to Dr. Fran Pong is Dr. Douglas Buxton. Dr. Buxton is president of the Buxton Foundation extraordinary a cornea specialist and a graduate of New York County on Friday. Next to Dr. Buxton is Dr. George Warner. Dr. George Warner is a Mount Sinai graduate of the residency program. He did a fellowship at Vanderbilt and is now uh, a world-renowned ENT specialist focused on the, uh, especially auto otology. He's director of the Year Institute here at New York County and site chair of auto ontology at New York County. You know, Dr. Uh, LaRose next to me. Next to me to my right is, is Mr. Thomas O'Brien, who's our Director of Development uh, at New York Dying and has done extraordinary um, uh, 
uh, work to help raise the money that we needed to sustain the uh, Next to Mr. O'Brien is Dr. Paul Lee. Dr. Lee is Chair of Ophthalmology at the Bronx VA. He's President of our New York Bionia Ophthalmology Alumni Association. He's also Associate Program Director here at the Combined Innovative New York Bionia Infirmary in Mount Sinai, which I want to point out is the uh, largest residency program currently in the United States for ophthalmology. He is a great program. Next to Dr. Lee, is Dr. Richard Rosen. Dr. Rosen is really the inspiration for our bicentennial tribute book that will be coming out hopefully later this fall, really detailing the remarkable history of the work on the infirmary. Dr. Rosen is uh, currently our Deputy Chair for Clinical Affairs, Vice Chair and Director of Research here at New York and Assistant Chief of the uh, uh, Division here at Mount Center House. Uh, next to Dr. Rosen is Dr. Paul Cedotti. Dr. Cedotti uh, was the uh, Chair of Ophthalmology in New York by year prior to the integration with uh, Mount Sinai Health System. Dr. Cedotti currently is Site Chair of Ophthalmology here at New York by year Infirmary, as well as System Chief of Glaucoma. And then finally, uh, Mr. Christopher Tina. Mr. Tina is a uh, Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. Uh, here at New York Dynia and has done an exemplary job keeping New York Dynia financially sound as we enter our game session. So with that, I think I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Frempong and Dr. LaRoche to accompany me to so get on the court. And then we will be calling up our guests uh, for additional uh, court time. Thank you. You want to move, please? Um, very good. Maybe we could take our mask off and not speech with picture. Okay. So, Dr. Rose, do you want to just describe just briefly because there's some there's a lot of symbolism, and I think for our Zoom audience, it would be great for them to understand just how incredibly powerful and impactful this, this portrait is. Okay. Uh, like Dr. Copeland said, we don't have an image of David McDonough. And with the artist Leroy Campbell, I, ch I gave him the time period. So the dress is period correct in terms of the time to try to bring him back to life um, and bring his spirit back to life. We have an eye chart here that says E, but it says excellence. It spells out the word excellence. Uh, there's a tribute to Imhotep, who was the first physician and most, first multi genius. The next inspirational quotes make your vision so clear that your fears become irrelevant. You have a four after here. You have a Dr. Copeland, who's a tribute, who is the chair of ophthalmology at Howard University. Dr. Pat Bath, who is a pioneer researcher with Laser Faco. Uh, Dr. Maurice Rab, who is a pioneer. Um, uh, retina specialist who made many contributions to ophthalmology. He wrote a textbook as well. These are more contemporary people that came after his legacy. Here you see people doing some eye work here and eye health care in ancient Africa, a tribute to the Nile Valley. Um, another quote, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Uh, since he was involved in anti-slavery activities, uh, there's a quote paper here from an article, anti-slavery activity increasing amongst free blacks as a tribute to some of the work that he was doing, uh, onward to victory, um, abolitionist efforts, uh, newspaper articles cut out from that period of time as well. So it's really a nice piece to really embody his academic excellence, his brilliance, um, I and ENT work, and uh, his abolitionist work as well, and a tribute to the people before him in the Nile Valley and the people more recently after him who have passed away uh, to really invite and hopefully to serve to inspire excellence uh, in everyone as part of our history that's not been told in that respects. And there are a lot more stories like that out there, but I'm really glad that Dr. Sai and leadership has accepted this piece over here. It's been an inspiration 
for the National Medical Fellowship and many of the students. We've awarded many scholarships to students that pursued um, very competitive ophthalmology residencies despite academic excellence as well and ENT residencies as well. And uh, this year, one of the first, one of the students, Giselle Lynch, who you mentioned, uh, is starting her residency here as well. So, thank well, you. Yeah, I think this is, adds to the incredible philanthropy here at New York County in support of diversity. I want a special shout out to Dr. Buxton. The Buxton Foundation has given uh, grants to the National Medical Fellowship, as well as Dr. Buxton uh, Foundation has also given uh, 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 cash awards to graduating medical students at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai who embody uh, diversity. Yes, um, we do want to thank the Buxton Foundation. They supported both the NMS scholarship and the, uh, um, the Mount Sinai scholarship. So thank you again, Dr. Thank you. Buxton. I'm thank you. I want to ask Dr. Frempong if she could read this plaque. Now, I want to tell you that this portrait will be shown or will be hung in our new surgical waiting room here at New York Eye so we're so delighted that it's going to be uh, seen and visualized by patients, physicians, and staff to utilize the surgical room. So, Dr. Frempong, you can read that? Absolutely. It's a tribute to Dr. David Turney McDonough, 1821 to 1893. Served New York Eye and Ear Infirmary as staff physician, America's first African-American eye ENT specialist, born graduated from Lafayette College, third in his class at Columbia University Medical School. Tribute commissioned and donated by Dr. Daniel and Marjorie LaRoche, and the artist is Leroy Campbell. Thank you. And an event like this does not occur without the dedication of those who have to put together. A special shout out to Alexander Bissette, our Director of Marketing and Communications for her work in getting this done. Uh, in a timely fashion. Uh, we you know, wanted to do it during bicentennial week, and she worked very closely with Tom O'Brien, our director of development. And then also uh, Sean, our photographer today, for really making this uh, Zoom uh, webinar uh, possible. So, with that, I'd like to thank you for uh, joining us today in a fitting tribute to Dr. David. Bernie McDonough and his legacy, not just here at New York Eye and Infirmary at Mount Sinai, but actually uh, medicine in the United States and throughout the world. So thank you all for joining us today. And, and I was so sorry that Dr. Copeland is out of town because as I mentioned, Dr. Copeland um, really started everything here at New York Eye by getting Dr. LaRoche, who's also a, uh, another co-chair of our director's council really 